Hi, it's Matt here. Welcome to the desk. And this is part two of the NAS32 or NAS A32 versus Pixhawk. And for this video, we're going to be looking at iNav. Now, unfortunately, things didn't go well on so many counts. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch across to the video where you can see me on the flight line and you'll see me getting ready and then it goes all pear-shaped and you'll find out why in a few minutes time. Hey, it's Matt here. I'm at the flying site and you can probably tell things are a little bit different than normal because I've got a laptop with me, USB lead and we've been and got the Texumo. This one is set up with iNav. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an adapted version of Clean Flight uh, and I've got the ESC out in the wing, I've got the GPS on the other wing, uh, I've got an extended battery lead there like so and I've come up here just to give her a quick flight test to see what it goes like. I've got um, pass through mode is the first option, then I've been and got rate mode so no other set in the set, that's rate mode, then I've got horizon mode and crucially I've also been and got myself uh, return to launch so I uh, return to home and I've also been and got loiter modes as well the really exciting piece is that I've just turned her on with a little 2s battery and the good news is it look, got a GPS lock within about four seconds and I was able to arm so I'm gonna go off and give her a whirl now uh, I don't know what I'm gonna get via footage but let's go and give it a whirl and see what happens I should probably bring the camera with me. So the plan of attack is just get her to fly. So we're going to take her off and just do a circuit, make sure everything works okay. Uh, and I'm going right out into the middle of the field because, as you may be able to hear behind me, there is a road. And um, sorry for the strange camera angle because I'm carrying the transmitter as well. So I want to get right out in the middle of the field so that when I try the return to launch feature, that she's got plenty of room to manoeuvre around so I'm aiming for about 100, 120 metres, something like that so it is going to be a bit wonky while I go out here so I'm not that far away I think that should probably do about it right, so let's go and get a set up and give it a whirl And this is where it all goes horribly wrong. I did put that little arrow up to hint at the sky. It started raining and it started raining hard at that. So I had to peg it back to the flight line, grab all the models, chuck them in the car. And I did manage to get out. So we're back at the desk now and... I made a couple of mistakes, but on the good news, I did manage to get the Texumo flying wing up into the air and I ma managed to give her a couple of flights round. Now, it really did that whole day, just didn't go to plan. And this, this Pixelhawk versus the NAS A32 and whether we're using iNav, uh, Patrick Key's base flight airplane or the Pixelhawk, uh, it's just a journey. And part of this journey, uh, we have our ups, and we also have our downs as well. Now, you'll find out about one of the big downs in a later video, I assure you, uh, for the part in this series. But it absolutely belted, down, belted it down. I needed to run straight back to the car uh, and get all the models tucked away. Let me just give you uh, like a summarized version of what actually happened. Uh, I got the Texumo, so imagine that's the Texumo. I got her up into the air. I flew around, pass through mode was a bit ropey as you would expect, and horizon and rate mode, perfectly fine. Plenty of stabilization, probably not enough movement to be fair, but she did fly around okay. But when I enabled GPS home, so return to home, is that it just kind of went off and did its own thing over there somewhere, and I had to go and rescue it. And I brought her back down and just reset it, let it get its lock again, and chucked it up again and flew it again. And it did exactly the same thing. It just wandered off in, into a tiny little dot in the sky. Uh, and then I retrieved it. And I thought, right, let's not give up hope. Let's give it a whirl with uh, loiter mode. So I landed it back down. 
uh, reset the board, uh, so take the power out and plug it back in, wait for it to get its lock, and took off again. And then loiter mode, it just kind of went off over there somewhere and then just started flying away. So I got back home and I chucked a message up on, on the forums and I actually raised the bug over on iNav and they said go and pop the message in the forums. And the, the mistake which I'd made, in fact I made two mistakes. The first one is the, and again, maybe this could be done a little bit better in the uh, iNav configurator, which is that you do need to go through these configuration steps. So is that you'll see that unlike clean flight, so if you're coming from clean, a clean flight or even base flight, you just click the calibrate accelerometer and it's all happy days. But with iNav, you need to calibrate it flat on the desk, then upside down, then pointing to the right, then pointing up, then left, and then down. And I didn't do that, hence the, the accelerometer just wasn't set. So it did pretty good considering. And also, I made a bit of a boo-boo, is that this was the setup which I was using. And what I had was this little buzzer glued up underneath the back here with hot glue. And the problem with that is that the buzzer has got a magnet in it. And then, because it was so close to the NAS A32 board, which is only literally just in there on the back, and by the way, it's at the back on purpose so that it's right on uh, the C of G line on the Teximo, is that when I put the buzzer or glued the buzzer here, is that the NAS A32 board for North was always this way. So it didn't matter which orientation I, I had it in, is that it always thought that North was that way, which really didn't help. So in part three of the series, uh, I've got the accelerometer set and I've taken the buzzer off and put her on a long lead and put her miles away from the NAS A32 board. And I'll give you a little hint of what happens, uh, which is that I have happy days. These features do work. But part four, enough said. So like I said, this is a journey. And when I find uh, a combination that works really, really well, uh, I, I'm so looking forward to sharing the results with you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm having ups and downs with iNav specifically. Uh, and I, by the way, give you another little hint. I have flown Patrick Key's base flight and I've also been and flown the Pixhawk. Now, two of those are a fantastic winners. They are, they are, they're absolutely brilliant. One of them needs a bit of a tweak. The other one worked brilliantly out of the box. You'll find out more about that in parts three and parts four. So with that said, don't forget to press the like button. And the other one is don't forget to press subscribe as well. Uh, this is going to be part of a series which I'm doing on the Pixel and the NAS A32 boards. And as I've kind of already hinted at, there are definite ups and there is one big down. And uh, you'll find out which board did that to my poor Texumo in a couple of days time. So with that said, from myself, Matt, cheerios.